Hello everybody, a good Arab Shabbos, Ephraim Schwartz here, calling you from incredible city of Carmiel, here in Eretz Yisrael, a country where everybody's eyes, certainly this time of year, every Jewish person's eyes are turned towards as we think more and more about Yerushalayim, about our exile, about our Gullahs from Eretz Yisrael. Um, and we read these parshas of really the last parshios of the Jewish people in Gullahs. We finish up the Sefer Bar Midbar, the Sefer of our wandering. And it's an incredible time frame, and this Shabbos particularly is a very unique and special Shabbos. On one hand, it's Shabbos, that's Rosh Chodesh. We're going to sing Hallel in Shul. We're going to uh, use songs of praise to Hashem, the new month that we blessed last, last week. At the same time, it's Misha Nichnas Av. It's the time that we enter the month of Av. It's a time of Memayatin Besimcha, where we minimize, we start to lessen our Simcha that we have. Um, it also comes up a unique dilemma, particularly this year, because it doesn't always fall out. It's very rare, in fact, for it to fall out that Shabbos and Rosh Chodesh um, Av fall out on the same day. Um, and the uh, it, it leads to a dilemma into which Haftorah we're meant to read this week. On one hand, Shabbos Rosh Chodesh, we have a special Haftorah of Hashamayim Kis'i, that the uh, heavens are the throne of Hashem, and the world is like the place where he rests his feet. Um, at the same time, we have the, we're told during these weeks, we have the three weeks, we have special haftoras of the tribulations and the foreboding of the destruction that Yermia Navi tells us. On one hand, we're reading troubles and tribulations. On the other hand, we're reading about the throne of Hashem and the glory of Hashem being revealed in this world. Um, and there's a debate, which Haftorah do we read? You look at the Mishnah Brewer, it talks about, do you read this one, this one, different customs, to read this one, to read that one. Interestingly enough, that Haftorah of Shemayim Kis'i, when it falls out on Mosh Chodesh Elul, there we definitely read the Haftorah of Hashemayim Kis'i on Rosh Chodesh Elul, as opposed to the ones of consolation of Yermiel Hanavi that we read for those seven weeks, because we're told that Shemayim Kis'i also contains consolation. So again, we have that dilemma, we have that twofold uh, uh, aspect to it. We're going to read a Haftorah that contains in it consolation, Hashemayim Kis'i, but at the same time, we have the Haftorah of tribulation. This is not the time of consolation yet. It's an interesting dilemma. Um, which one to read, and is that enough? Are they the same thing? Are they not the same thing? Now, besides all of that on this Shabbos, this is, in fact, the Shabbos and the, the, that mentions Rosh Chodesh Av is the Shabbos that is the only yard site that is mentioned in the Torah. Um, and I'm sure many people are aware of that. The Torah doesn't tell us when Avram Avinu died, when his yard site is, when Yitzchak, when Rachel, when Leah, even when Moshe Rabbeinu, which we know is Zion Adr, comes from Chazal, there is no yard site that is mentioned in the Torah. The only one is this week's parsha. And uh, that is, of course, the yard site of Aharon HaKohen, which is this Shabbos in, uh, um, which is on Rosh Chodesh Av. Um, and why is it that it's mentioned out of everybody else in the entire Torah? Why is the yard site of Aharon HaKohen uh, mentioned this week? And of course, it's because we lane it this week is certainly maybe the reason, one of the reasons why we lane it this week of your Aharon HaKohen. But um, I have a different question, which is that, it's not just that the yard site of Aaron Akoin is mentioned this week. In fact, if you go through the Torah, um, the beginning of Parshas Maso, it goes through a travel log of our 40 years in the wilderness. And it almost reads like, you know, when you put on the ways, you put that roots, you know, and it shows you all the different stops. This is all the different stops. You go here, you make a left here, you make a right there, you make a left there, you make a right there. All, everything. 42, year, 42 travels, 40 years in the wilderness. And there is no detail saying, oh, we stopped over here, we got the Torah. Oh, we stopped over here, this is where Korach was. Oh, we, this is what happened over here. Not interested in that. You won't see that on ways, right? All you're going to see is exactly where you turned here, there, here, there. That, that's what this entire list is in the beginning of the Torah, with one exception. Out of the 40 years in the Midbar, there is only one incident, one that's really two incidents that the Torah mentions. And it's not Kriyas Yamsov, it's not Amalek, it's not the getting of the Torah, it's not the spies, it's, it, the, there's only one out of 40 years. And that incident is, of course, the death of Aaron. 
But you assume a Kaddish, and they keep camp from Kaddish, Vayachanu Baharahar, in the land of Edom, Vayaal Aaron, and Aaron Rakoin went up to Harahar, Al Pi Hashem, by the word of Hashem, by the mouth of Hashem, and he died over there in the 40th year when we left Mitzrayim, on the fifth month, on the first day of the month. And Aaron was 123 years old when he died in Harahar. And then it tells us, and the Knani, the king of Arad, heard, um, and in the Negev and Eretz Canaan, Bevo Bnei Yisrael. Okay. That last verse about the Knani hearing <coughs> is, of course, that the Knani attacked us at the time. And we're told it was Amalek, it was the Knani. But out of the 40 years, that's the only story that's mentioned. Why is that the only story that's mentioned? And why is it even mentioned out of everything that happened in the Midbar? Um, and to a certain degree to understand that you really have to understand the function of where we're at here in the Torah. We are in really the last part of the, 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 the written Torah from Hashem. I mean, the Parish of Sefer Tevarim, which we're going to begin next week, is all one large speech of Moshe Rabbeinu. And we're moving from Bamidbar, from the wilderness, to Devarim, to the words the words spoken, they even sound the same. Midbar, the wilderness, Devarim, to the speaking, to the power of speech. Midbar is like Medaber. I mean, the function we're told from Adam and Rish in the beginning of time is man was created all the way back in British just to be Ruach Memalo, to be a, a man that has the power of speech, to capture the imagination and take all of the dimyon, all that we possess, all of the thoughts, and to make it into something specific, to make it something clear, to bring it out into this world. That's the function of the Torah that starts all the way in Bereshus, with the creation of man. How do we become from an inanimate world to a world that is a medaber, to a people that can become ish devarim? And it's fascinating if you think about it, Moshe himself, his journey, which also ends pretty much over here, right? Moshe himself's journey is what? Of lo ish devarim anochi. I'm a man that can't speak. And Hashem said, Misam Pela Elam, who gave you the ability to speak? Who taught you how to speak? And he moves to the Sefer Devarim all the way at the end. That's the, he becomes the only person in the history of the world that speaks for Hashem, right? And his words are the word of Hashem, that the word of Hashem is speaking from his throat. It's a fascinating. Now it's interesting, right? The this power, this ability of changing from the imagination, from the mind, from the dimyon to the real world. That's really the process of the Jewish people living from, leaving Egypt, coming over here. We're going through periods of miracles after miracles from the time when we become a nation. We can't even speak, we cry out to Hashem. And then we have the splitting of the sea and the 10 plagues and the mud. And everything is being done for us, war after war, battle after battle. And then slowly, slowly, Hashem is weaning us off, just like a child gets weaned off its mother. We're having B'nai Yisrael being weaned off. And that final time happens, that moment happens, it's supposed to happen, we're told, when Moshe Rabbeinu should speak to the rock rather than hit the rock. When the Hashem teaches us, it's not about, boom, bringing the brute force out, but it's going ahead and showing that with your words you can accomplish, with your words you can go ahead and make the world a different place. You can become... Dvarim, you can become Eastern, you can be Medabrim. They fail that test. And Aaron is going to die as a result of that test. Moshe is going to die as a result of that, of that failure. And he dies over there. And that's the beginning of the process when we're told that what happens? The clouds of glory disappear with Aaron. The Jewish people are going to be standing on their own now. The Knani will hear, whoa, now the Jews are no longer protected. And you know what? When Aaron's gone and the Jews are no longer protected, we rip them apart. We have that power ourselves. We were given that power. That becomes the changing point of B'nai Israel, of all of our travels, everything that we went until now. Yeah, that was all Hashem gave us the Torah. Hashem gave us the Yamsa. Hashem did all of those things for us. Here's where we do it without. After Aaron, we're told that Moshe is going to die. Aaron's going to die. Can we stand on our own or not? And that's what happens over there. Aaron dies al pi Hashem, with the mouth of Hashem. Parsha's Midian, right? Interesting enough, Midian, you know what Midian is? Midian is the same letters as Dimyon, imagination. Switch it around a little bit. It's that Midian comes, the daughters of Midian coming saying, ah, oh, you don't need this, you just mix with us together, you don't need the word of it. Don't be, you know, special, don't be unique, you don't have a certain power. 
and our response to that command to destroy me, to get rid of that imagination, to bring it to Paul is what? How do we do that? We're told that the way that we do that, it starts off with interesting halacha in, in Parshas Matos, the powers of vows. We can make things with our words. We can go ahead and erase things with our words. We don't have, live in the world of Midian anymore, of Dimyon. We make things real and we can go ahead and remove things. I made a vow, that's real, it exists, boom. Guess what, I can take that away. The power of the Jewish people is Al-Pi Hashem. And all of the travels that we're doing is Al-Pi Hashem through the word of Hashem, through Hashem. And we keep getting that word again, again, and again. And we're following that word and that process automatically gives us the power to have our own Pi, to have our own Pe, to be the own Ish Tavarim. Aaron is fascinating. Aaron becomes that power through silence. Aaron is silent by his, by the, uh, when, when he should have been the leader, he swallows that and says, it's the will of Hashem, Moshe should be the leader. His children, Nadav and Avio died, he's domain, he's quiet, he becomes like a rock because it's Hashem's will. And the Yalka tells us when Hashem takes him up to the mountain, Moshe brings him up there and he says, if man has to die because of the sin of other Mauritian, what do you have to say? He says, it's the will of Hashem. And if I'm gonna tell you you're gonna die in a hundred years, what would you say? You'd say, it's the will of Hashem. And if I tell you that you have to die today, what would you say? And Aaron would say, Baruch Dayanemes. He died accepting the will of Hashem. Hashem is controlling the world. Hashem is the word that we follow. And he dies with that mouth of Hashem, with that kiss of Hashem, with that unity of Hashem. This is Rosh Chodesh Av. Rosh Chodesh Av is this month at the same time where there's this mourning, there's this destruction, where there's this perennials where we see in the world. At the same time, it's a month of great simcha. It's a month of consolation where we see that destruction. We realize that Hashem is the one that is running the world. But at the same time, our prayers, our songs, the words are within us to bring that back again. That mourning can bring that back again. Mir Hashem, we should be benching this month of Av, right? Hasidim say it's memayatin besimcha. How do we make ourselves smaller? What do you mean minimize simcha? Mitzvah gedolios besimcha. We should be happy all the time. They said, no, you know what it means? We should nichlas av memayatin. We make ourselves smaller. How? Besimcha, with the joy that we know that Hashem is with us, that we have the power to change things, we have the power to bring the geula. And Amir Hashem, we should merit to have the geula shlema. Have an amazing Shabbos, a wonderful Rosh Chodesh, and God willing, we should be zocha to the geula shlema.